Okay, so now we have transected the head. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite down the middle, but we tried the best we could. We can see that the nasal cavity on this side still has the nasal septum. Up in here is going to be the frontal sinus. And there is a corneal diverticulum that goes up into the horn. We got the brain here. Let's see, we got the nasopharynx up here. I've cut away the palatal pharyngeal arch so that we could see here now that the epiglottis is going to sit up on the caudal edge of the soft palate. Okay, here, here nicely we can see how the esophagus goes above the airway. So here's the larynx and the trachea, and this is the esophagus up here. And right about there is the esophageal lymen, and so this would be part of the laryngeal pharynx up here. Okay? So nasopharynx, oral pharynx down here, laryngeal pharynx, esophagus, larynx, and trachea. So with this hemisection here, we have a little bit of the septum there, but we can see nicely the dorsal concha with the dorsal nasal meatus, the middle nasal meatus, the ethmoidal turbinates, and the ventral nasal concha with the ventral nasal meatus. And then this space here between the septum and the concha is going to be the common nasal meatus. Okay, from here we pass through the cone into the into the nasopharynx. Right here, we can see an opening. That's the opening into the auditory tube. Okay, that's in the nasopharynx, and then it goes to the middle ear. Okay, down here we can see the palatal pharyngeal arches and notice that the soft palate generally is below the epiglottis so the epiglottis rests on the dorsal surface of the soft palate okay so here's the epiglottic cartilage here we have the thyroid cartilage here and here is a cricoid cartilage and then in this space here is going to be the retinoid cartilage. Notice that in the ruminant, we don't have a laryngeal ventricle. Okay. Come back here. And we can see, well, I'll show you tonsil on the other guy. Here on the tongue, we've got this big bulging ridge right here. That's called the torus linguae. Okay, and this is the lingual fossa. Notice all these papilla in the mouth. This helps keep the food in towards the teeth when they're chewing. And we can see right here the sublingual caruncle. Okay, which is where the ducts of the, the mandibular and the sublingual salivary gland empty. Lower incisors here. Remember we have a dental pad up here. No incisors. And once again, really nicely we have opened up the frontal sinus. Okay. Okay, so now I've opened this up a little bit more. We can just barely see in here the palatoglossal arch which is the beginning of our oral pharynx. And here in our oral pharynx, we see this hole. This hole here is actually the palatine tonsil. Okay, so there's a little palatine sinus in here that is surrounded by the tonsillar tissue. 
Okay, so that's the palatine tonsil. Here we see the epiglottis nice. Here we have the carniculate processes of our arytenoid cartilages opening up into our glottis. Okay, and then we look up in here, this ridge here that's more midline because we're cut off midline. You can, you can see it nicely. This is the pharyngeal tonsil. Okay. Okay, so we have here, this is going to be the mandibular portion of our sternocephalicus, which actually goes up to the zygomatic garch in these guys. I've cut away a lot of this prodded salivary gland so that we can expose here the dorsal buccal branch of the facial nerve and coming off dorsally here is the auriculopalpebral nerve. Okay. Now if we come over to this side we can see the common carotid artery running with a vagosympathetic trunk. As we come up here, we're going to have an occipital branch. And then we're going to continue as the external carotid. We're not going to have an internal carotid in the ruminants. That degenerates following birth. And so our external carotid is going to come up here. And we have a large branch here coming off going to the tongue. That's the lingual artery. Okay. In the goat, we don't have a facial artery, so this is just a lingual artery. If we follow that external carotid up, it's going to give off a caudal auricular, and eventually it gives off this branch here, which is the superficial temporal. So now that external carotid terminates as the maxillary and as the superficial temporal. That superficial temporal is going to come up and become the corneal artery, okay, heading up to the horn. We can see a nerve running with it right here. That's going to be the corneal nerve. Okay, so the corneal nerve innervates the horn as does the infratrochlear, which I believe I found. Ah, here we go. This guy right here running up. Okay. So that's going to be the infratrochlear. If we come from the medial canthus of the eye back to the horn, we'd need to inject about halfway here to get the infratrochlear nerve and then from the lateral canthus to the horn about halfway here to get the corneal nerve. Okay, And those would be the nerves that we would want to block if we were to do a dehorning. Okay, Over here medial to it we have this groove that's going to be the supraorbital groove which contains the frontal vein. Okay, we can't appreciate the frontal vein at this point. We can see nicely right here the medial retropharyngeal lymph node. Okay, so this would be where the pharynx is at. It's been cut away, but this is where the pharynx would be. So it's behind, so it's retro to the pharynx, so it's retropharyngeal. Yeah, there will be a lateral one. It'll be towards the wing of the atlas. So on this side here, deep to the prodded salivary gland, that may be in fact the lateral retropharyngeal lymph node because it's right near the wing of the atlas. Okay. So once again, that's our prodded salivary gland. Down here we have our mandibular salivary gland, our mandibular lymph nodes. There's our thyroid gland, and we've left the larynx over here, but remember the thyroid gland is always at the junction 
of the larynx and the trachea. Okay.